I'm Trevor Price and I've been a university lecturer for over 20 years. I've helped many undergraduate and postgraduate students do their research projects from undergrad BSc students, for example, right up to PhD level research work. I've also been a student myself, so I know exactly what it's like to do research successfully. The first thing to do is to set your research aim. The aim is the thing that you will probably be judged against when it comes to uh, your lecturers or the university staff assessing whether you've passed or not. So the aim needs to be a SMART aim. What do I mean by SMART? SMART is an acronym I use that stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Realistic and Time Bound. The time is usually the deadline you have for the research and that's probably out of your control. But the other things are likely, at least to some extent, to be under your control. So try and get your aim to be a specific, measurable, achievable and realistic aim. Think about the resources you have, the time, the energy, the money, the wherewithal to do the research. So the aim needs to be specific. So if I give you an example in uh, real life, I might say my aim uh, at the weekend is to go and watch the latest Spider-Man movie which I know is showing at a cinema in Cardiff, not far from my home, at two o'clock on Saturday. That is very, very specific and I can measure my success against that. If I turn up to the cinema at three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, I'm going to have missed an hour of the movie. So I can measure my success against that specific uh, aim. Is it achievable? Well, as long as I've got money, as long as I've got enough time, and as long as I can get to the cinema, it is achievable. So I've got those resources lined up, so I'm okay for that. And is it realistic? Well, for me, in my current situation, yes, that is realistic to get to that cinema in Cardiff on Saturday at two o'clock and spend a couple of hours watching the movie. So for your research topic, you need to think about what your SMART aim could be or should be. Perhaps your academic supervisor can help you with that, or perhaps you need to read around the subject, get some journal articles, uh, Google the topics that you're interested in, start reading the trade press, trade journals, trade magazines, blogs, wikis, whatever. Join some Facebook groups, tweet your friends, chat with people who work in that sort of um, topic area. All those things can feed you with ideas of what your aim should be. Once you've got your aim, you need to split that aim down into smaller work packages that are called objectives. Ideally, your aim is one or two sentences long and your objectives are in the number of about four or five. So you've got about four or five objectives that once they're all complete, they help you succeed to meet your aim. So my example of watching the movie on Saturday is uh, an objective could be to order and place uh, my money um, in buying a cinema ticket. So one of my objectives for watching the movie on Saturday is to go online to the cinema's website and order a ticket. Another objective then is to pay for the ticket. A third objective would be to turn up just before two o'clock when the movie is scheduled to start and collect the ticket and go and watch the movie. So I've got a small number of objectives there, all of which if I succeed in completing them successfully, it helps me achieve my aim, which is to watch the movie. You need to do that for your research aim. Once you've got your aim, you've got your objectives, the next thing you need to do is think about the methodology that you're going to use to achieve those objectives. Your methodology is just a fancy academic way of saying how you're gonna go about this research topic. Specifically, it's like when you um, get a recipe for baking a cake. Your objectives are set out, but your methods 
are the steps that you take in that recipe. So your research methodology could include going to interview people or doing an experiment in a laboratory, maybe going out in the field and making some observations or some measurements out there. So think about your methodology, thinking about um, the, the uh, resources, the time, the energy and the money you have available to you. And then I would suggest you put that out into a project plan, a project schedule. Uh, if you're like me, you like to work with um, graphical uh, rather than text-based project schedules. So I would draw out a project Gantt chart. A Gantt chart is basically uh, on um, like a spreadsheet. Uh, going down the page, you ha would have a number of things, a number of tasks that you need to do. And across the horizontal uh, edge of the page, you would have time, ideally perhaps each week. So for each task, uh, you would set uh, in your project plan an idea of how long those tasks would take. And once you build that picture up in your project Gantt chart, you have an idea of what needs to be done in which sequence in order for you to successfully complete that project. So once you've got your aims sorted, your objectives all planned out, your methodology worked out, and your Gantt chart or project plan um, fixed, you're well on your way to achieving a great and successful research project. All you have to do then is to follow your plan and hopefully you'll do very well. Hopefully you found this movie useful. If you did, please uh, like this movie on my channel, subscribe to the channel and uh, also please, 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 if you've got any questions or any comments about doing research at university, I'd love to hear them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Bye for now.